Grace and peace to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this service of worship for Sunday the 17th of January 2021, which is the second Sunday of the Epiphany. The one who calls you together this day yearns for each of you and for all people to hear and be blessed. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Blessed is the one who comes bringing trustworthy words for the healing of the world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Our first hymn is a version of Psalm 139. Thou art before me, Lord, thou art behind, sung to the tune Highland Cathedral. Let us pray. You invite us, O God, to live in your ways, and you give us to each other to know and to love as we journey in this life. Show us your will for all creation. Help us to listen to your urgings with prayerful hearts, so that we may honour what you have made. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the Psalms of David, the 139th Psalm. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, 
Even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and do I not loathe those who rise up against you? Let us turn to God, confessing our sins. Assured that the one who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confessions of our hearts and is ready to forgive. Let us pray. Holy God, you see into each of us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nation, neighbours, families, friends and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. And this we ask in Jesus' name. The good news for all of us, is that God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness. And by grace, you have been saved. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. Know that you are forgiven. And be at peace today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Why did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe, because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By your Holy Spirit, O God, open our ears our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to the Holy Word, so that it comes to rule within us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. 
when a couple of years ago the Church of Scotland set out to think about reforming itself to meet the needs of the 21st century, the word of Jesus to his disciples when he came to them and said, follow me, were chosen to express the intention for the church to become a body in which every member knew themselves called to faith and called to the service of the kingdom of God. That kingdom that Jesus proclaimed. It is a call to get up from where we are and perhaps from where we have become settled or even stuck. To listen to the voice of Jesus that summons us to live and witness to the good news. It is a call to move forward with God and to put our faith into action, using the gifts each one of us has to offer. Today's Gospel story about Nathaniel speaks to us of the unexpected way in which God reveals himself at work in the world. And it speaks also of the low threshold of our expectations, which must be confounded again and again, and be raised higher and higher than the limitations of our own worldview. If we are to hear God calling us and be able to respond in faith to God's summons to follow Jesus. This season of the Epiphany is a season whose theme is always the revelation of God in Christ and how we respond to that revelation when we hear the call to follow as disciples, trusting, faithful, committed. Today we hear how Jesus was revealed to Nathanael as the longed-for Messiah and Saviour, and thereby confounding Nathanael's scepticism and cynicism. We reflect on his response to the revelation of God's presence before him, and Nathanael's willingness to trust in God, to hear God's call, to get up and to follow where God was leading. Nathanael believed that the long-promised Messiah could not possibly have come from anywhere quite so obscure as Nazareth. What, he asks, can anything good come from Nazareth? And he clearly expects the answer to be no, of course not. Everyone knows that nothing good comes from there, and certainly not God's Messiah. At first, Nathanael, like so many others, sees Jesus only as a man, the son of a carpenter. He needed the help of his friend Philip to understand the revelation of God in Jesus, and so to be able to recognise Jesus for who he is, and see what God is doing before he, Nathaniel, would get up and follow Jesus with his friend Philip. The truth is that Nathaniel was not ready to believe that God could work in the way he did. It went against all his expectations and understanding. In fact, we could say that his expectations, his expectation of God, his expectation of himself, just weren't high enough. Nathanael needed to expect more of God and more of Jesus as of himself and of his friend Philip before he would come to understand that in Jesus he did indeed encounter the living God. I could no longer deny the truth, nor refuse his own calling. This is a story about someone's expectations, and in reflecting on them, we are brought to consider what it is that we expect of God, and in turn, what God expects of us. It is clear from Scripture, from the Gospel stories, from the Old Testament, from the words of the prophets and of Jesus, from the history of Israel and of the early church, that God has high expectations of his people, even if we often fail to live up to them. The amazing thing is that knowing our frailty and our failings, God still calls us to serve the world in Jesus' name as members of the church. I suspect, however, that like Nathaniel, we do not always have the same high expectations either of God or of ourselves. 
there is in the Scottish psyche a deeply ingrained trait that is particular to us, that refuses to allow us to boast of our abilities and our gifts. And on the whole, I think that's not a bad thing, because as followers of a God who in Christ gave his life for the salvation of the world, we have every reason to act with humility. Nevertheless, that same God has given each one of us talents and capabilities to use in his service. Each one of us different from the others, as our gifts are as diverse as we are. But all combining to work together as one whole, which is the church, the body of Christ, active in the world. Our problem is that sometimes we just don't believe that we are fit and able to serve God. We find it hard to believe that we, I or you personally, might have been chosen by God to play an important part in God's mission in the world, to bring all creation and every creature to newness and fullness of life. We don't expect that God can be ready to use us to do amazing things, or that we might be up to the job to which God calls us. The truth is our expectations are too low. Like Nathaniel's, need to be confounded so that we can see how God works in the world and ready ourselves to play our part. Nathaniel, who starts out as a deeply unconvinced skeptic, is brought to deeper insight by Jesus' knowledge of him against all his expectations, and he comes to acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God and Messiah. Too often, the church has the same problem as Nathaniel, for the church consists of people like you and me, men and women, young and old, who are just human. And a church full of those so sure of themselves and expectations that sometimes these can never be altered with our fixed viewpoints and stubborn refusal to be persuaded other than we already think or believe. And if those expectations are set low, then there's plenty of room for scepticism to colour the way we see the world around us, to see other people and the way we understand God and our relationship with God. We may even get to the point where we no longer believe much of what we are told by anyone. And this is an increasing problem in an era when fake news in the life of the world, in politics, in society, in economics, is all too easily spread by lies and subterfuge. Like Nathaniel, we may come to prefer to sit back under our fig tree as detached onlookers, refusing to be drawn out. We may find it easy to ask, can anything good come from our church? Can anything good come from our people? Can anything good come from God. It seems to me at times that too many in the church at large seem to have stopped expecting anything much of God. As our numbers dwindle, our money becomes less, and we find ourselves on the margins of a society in which we once had a great deal of influence. Today's society is shaped by the advance of secular and material values, And it seems the odds are stacked against us. It might be only natural to be tempted to give up, to withdraw, and to ask, why bother? No one's listening to us anyway. Or what's the point? Nothing we do makes any difference anyway. And there are indeed times when God seems silent, when God seems absent. But we know this is not true. For in Christ, God is with us. God is for us. God is one of us. God calls people of all ages to be part of his work in the world. No matter who we are, God knows us and calls us into his service. And God waits for us to make our response to his call in faith. So often that response is determined by what we expect and by whether or not we have any hope for our present or for our future or any faith left in a God who still acts in our world. Nathaniel did not expect much, 
But God called and he ended up getting up from where he was and following, leaving behind his fig tree, his scepticism and his disbelief. God expects his people to answer, to get up and to follow likewise, holding fast to our faith and trusting that we do make a difference by what we say, by how we act, by how we live. That new ways of doing things are always worth trying and believing that new ventures in faith are always worth supporting. Because then maybe, just maybe, all our cynicism and scepticism may be disproved. And we find our expectations confounded by the discovery of what God can achieve through us. To God who calls us to be his people in the world, as the body of Christ, in the name of his Son, our Saviour, be praise and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Let us turn to God with our prayers of intercession for the world and his peoples. Let us pray. O oh God, we pray for all the earth, the church, and all those who are in need. And we say to you, God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and for the leaders of the nations, that wisdom and integrity will prevail for the good of all people, and especially the poorest of this world, for regions torn by conflict, that peace may reign and living become an enterprise of construction rather than destruction. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all people of faith, for the unity of the body of Christ, that divisions might not turn people away from the church. We pray for peoples of other faiths, for Hindus and Muslims, Buddhists and Jews, that wherever prayers are raised up, you, O oh God, who are the one God of all, will listen to the peoples of the world and draw them closer to know you better and to understand your will more clearly. For all people who nurture your life in the name of a greater good, God of grace, we say, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nation in these days of great difficulty, for our Prime Minister and Government, for our First Minister and Government in Scotland, for those who govern us in our local councils, for those who preside over our courts and judges. We pray for all those who have power to make policies that shape our society, that they will consider what is most healthy for people and for all creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are in need, for all who are hungry in our nation and our world, for those who have no home or no employment, for those who are either unjustly or justly imprisoned, for parents and children who live in fear for any reason, and for all who this day are in mourning, grieving the loss of those whom they have known and loved. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, in the silence of our hearts, we name our concerns before you. In Jesus' name, we ask you to hear our prayers. With thanksgiving, we remember all those who have shaped us in your ways, O God. Receive our prayers and grant whatever you see that your people need. And all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. And now we pray together in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our hymn is Soldiers of Christ Arise. I say to you, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Listen to the word of the Lord as you move through your days. Trust that the Holy Spirit will guide your, your choices. See in each person you meet one for whom Jesus gave his life. Listen for God's call and prepare yourselves to get up and to follow. I say to you, Go in peace into the world to love and to serve the Lord. And as you go in peace, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>